May the Lord feed your spirit with His Word. We have the teaching in the YouTube channel New Hope English, also in the Instagram New Hick, TikTok called New Hope International Church, also Facebook Pastor Varula Harpreet and New Hope International Church. I would like you to really listen to what God wants to say to you in this teaching carefully, and I believe that the Holy Spirit will reveal the light of heaven to you. See you in the teaching. I know that the Lord loves you so much, and He has the best plan for your life. He has a good purpose for you. His plan is for good future and hope. That's why we want to seek His plan, His purpose, and. Know His will for us. In order to know His purpose and plan, in order to live a life that seek the kingdom of God first, we need to know the Word of God. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray together. We're going to learn about spiritual eyesight. Father, we ask Your Holy Spirit to open our spiritual eyes and give the clear spiritual eyesight for us, Lord. Help us to understand your word and practice what we learn. We ask your Holy Spirit to teach us in this lesson. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7 say, Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. When Moses was at the end of his life. The scriptures say that his natural eyesight was not dim, but consider this as also symbolic. His eye was 20-20 if he went to see an ophthalmologist. His eyes of faith, the eyes of his heart, were still clear, still looking for God's goodness, and full of faith and expectancy. At 120 years old. He had 20-20 vision of the awesome God who came to him at the age of 80 and said it was time to deliver the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. Forty years after Moses had made a tragic mistake that seemingly caused him to miss God's plan, he went on to part the Red Sea to bring water out of a rock and to see many other supernatural signs. God wants us to be prosperous and strong in spirit, like Moses. God wants us to have a clear, sharp spiritual eyesight. We are strong in spirit, and when our spiritual life is strong and prosperous, we have also the very sensitive ear to the voice of God and good spiritual eyesight, the eyes of faith. The eyes of expectancy that we trust God. When our spirit and soul are prosperous, we will prosper in other areas of our life, including our physical, financial, and relational well-being. This is why my heart desire is to help you to be prosperous in your spirit, and you shall have also very good spiritual eyesight. Third John, chapter one, verse two, say, "Dear friend, I hope all is well with you, and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. When you are strong in your spirit, when your spiritual eyesight are very sharp, your spiritual ears are very sensitive to the voice of God, then your health gonna be good, and other areas of your life, your finances, relationships." Will be good as well. Proverbs chapter twenty, verse twelve say, "Ears that hear, and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both." This verse states that the Lord gave us both physical and spiritual eyes, emphasizing the importance of spiritual discernment alongside our physical senses. We need to have. Healthy physical life, and we need to have prosperous, healthy spiritual life, and our spiritual discernment, our spiritual eyesight, and our ears to hear what the spirit say. If Moses were here with us, he would tell you and me 
that God's favor is not for a season; it's for your lifetime. His eyes of faith believe that God's favor is for our lifetime. Let us have faith in what God say in the Bible about His favor. The eyes of faith we believe in what God say in the Scripture. We see the spiritual meaning of what God say in His Word and by the Spirit of God. Psalm chapter 30 verse 5 say, "For His anger lasts only a moment, but His favor." Last a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. You can see that we need to believe that God's favor will last for a lifetime. We should have that spiritual eyesight to see the favor of God coming, the goodness of God coming, the promises of God are being fulfilled. Our spiritual eyes should see the promises of God, the goodness of God, and the favor of God in our life. Second Corinthians chapter six verse two. For he says, "In the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I help you." I tell you now is the time God's favor. Now is a day of salvation, my brothers and sisters. You should have the spiritual eyesight to know that God's favor is coming, and God's salvation is coming as well. He can save you from debt. Sickness, disease, family breaking down, your parenting problems, your ministry problem, your depression, your anxiety. God can save you, and He can show His favor to you because His favor lasts for a lifetime. Let us have that kind of spiritual eyesight, like Moses. You have not made too many mistake. The obstacle are not too big, and God's will is going to bring. To pass what He promised you, our spiritual eyesight should see the faithfulness of God. We should have the eyes of faith that God will fulfill His promise. Now start expecting God's favor. He is longing to be good to you and me, but you have to be looking for His goodness. Our spiritual eyesight should focus on God's promises, His faithfulness, His goodness. Not on the problem, not on the sickness, not on the things that happen around us, because we don't walk by sight; we walk by faith. Our spiritual eyes of faith look at God's goodness and favor and faithfulness. He is a faithful God; He shall fulfill His promise. And when our spiritual life is strong, we can obey His word. And when we obey His word, we will experience. The victory and the blessing, Psalm chapter twenty-three verse six says, "Surely, or only goodness, mercy, and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life." You can see, surely, goodness, mercy, and unfailing love of God shall follow me and you all the days of our life. His favor lasts for a lifetime. And through the length of my days, the house of the Lord, and in His presence shall be my dwelling place. We should love to be in the presence of God. We should love to go to church, worship God, praise God. We should soak ourselves in the presence of God, and the favor of God will be upon us. When you have a clear spiritual eyesight, you will love to go to church because you know there you can honor God, you can serve God, you can participate in the Great Commission, and you can. Receive the word. You can worship and stay in the presence of God. When the presence of God come upon you, His goodness will come. His strength, His power, His grace, His favor will soak into you. That is the way we should walk. Because we don't just look at the money and hey, I'm gonna work on Sunday. I'm gonna keep making money. I'm gonna enjoy golf game on Sunday. No, you love to go to church because your spiritual eyesights are clear. Yes, I need God. I need to seek Him first. I need to serve Him because when I serve Him, He shall bless the food I eat and the water I drink, and He heal my sickness. And I believe 
Even though I don't see God with my physical eyes, but when I step into the church or when I spend devotion time with God and pray and sing song to God and read the Bible, the presence of God will show up. And in His presence, there's a fullness of joy and strength will come. The joy of the Lord is my strength. And I believe He's going to shower His wisdom upon me, His goodness upon me, His grace upon me, His power upon me, and I shall be the blessing to the nations. The scripture help us to understand the way of God and open our spiritual eyes to see the goodness of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, For once you were full of darkness, before we became a Christian, before we got filled with the Holy Spirit and born again to follow Christ, we were full of darkness. Our spiritual eyes were blinded we could not see the light of God, the light of the gospel, and the truth of God yet. But thank God, we gave our life to Jesus. He is our Lord and Savior. We decided to repent. And now, the Bible says, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. After we gave our life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will shine the light of God upon our spiritual eyes so we can see what is right, what is wrong, what is a good thing, the character of God, the promises of God, the goodness of God. We need the clear spiritual eyesight to see many things that God has prepared for us and God has bought for us by His Son, the blood of His Son. This verse encourages believers to walk as children of light with the eyes of the heart enlightened. We should surrender to the Lordship of Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus would shine the light of God into our life and through our life into other people so that we can be the salt and the light of the world. We receive the life of God. We see the right thing. And we do the right thing and we shine the light of God into this dark and dying world. We need very clear spiritual eyes. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes to see the light of God. John chapter 8 verse 12, once more Jesus addressed the crowd. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light which is life. When we follow God, when Jesus is in us, He is our Lord, our Master, our Manager. He is our CEO. We surrender to Him because He's the light. He will open our spiritual eyes to see everything clearly, not in darkness anymore. And we can be the light of the world for Him. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 to 6 says, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We're preaching that Jesus Christ is Lord. And we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. May the Holy Spirit open our spiritual eyes to see the light of the good news, to believe in Jesus, and to see the truth of God, and we can discern what is wrong, what is a deception, what is a lies of the enemy, what is sinful, and what is the things of the world, and we recognize and see the good things of God, the truth of God, the blessing of God, and we will make a choice. We're going to follow God. We're going to choose blessing and life. How can we choose blessing and life? If we don't see it, if our eyes are so blinded and blurred, we need to have clear spiritual eyes. Isaiah 42, verses 6 to 7, 
I, the Lord, have called you, the Messiah, for a righteous purpose, and in righteousness I will take you. You mean Jesus, by the hand, and will keep you. I will give you. You mean Jesus, the Messiah, for a covenant to the people Israel, for a light to the nations Gentile, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out prisoner from the dungeon, and those who sit in darkness from the prison. This is a prophecy concerning the Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, that He can open the eyes of the blind. Of the Jews and the Gentiles, I'm the Gentile too because I'm not a Jew. God opened my eyes 40 plus years ago to see the love of God, and now I'm saved. I walk in the light of God. It's so wonderful. I pray that God will open the eyes of people in different nations, and my friend, my relative, my kids. The Lord Jesus Christ will touch their heart. The Holy Spirit will really open their eyes. This is why we need the anointing. We need the presence of the Holy Spirit, the thickness of the Holy Spirit on us. Because when we share the gospel or we share the testimony, the one who opened the eyes of the listener is not me. It's the Holy Spirit on me and around me to open the eyes of people. God wants to open people's spiritual eyes and see His light. This is why he has given us the word and the spirit. He wants to use us to help lost people to come to his light. Therefore, we share the testimony with the power of the Holy Spirit. We share the good news, which is the power of God, and we love the Holy Spirit. We love the fire of God. We want to be cleansed by the fire. We want to be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Everywhere we go, we can share. The light of God and the Holy Spirit on us can open the spiritual eyes of people, and they can come to know God, and they will come to the truth of God, repent of their sin, and believe in Jesus Christ. Acts chapter twenty-six, sixteen to eighteen say, "But rise and stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness." Both of the things which you have seen, and of the things which I will yet reveal to you, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles, to whom I now send you, to open their eyes. Again, to open their eyes, the Holy Spirit, the anointing on the Apostle Paul, will open the eyes of the Gentiles in order to turn them from darkness to light. And from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in Me. My brother and sister, I pray that your spiritual eyes shall be clear. You can see the light of God. May the Word of God open your eyes. May the Holy Spirit come. Into your life, fill you, and give you the spiritual insight, the eyes of faith, the eyes of confidence and trust in God, and your clear spiritual eyesight will see the truth of God, the faithfulness of God, the goodness and the grace and the favor of God, and God anoint you and use you to bring the good news to people. And the Holy Spirit on you shall give light to the blind eyes of people, open their eyes to see the love of Jesus Christ. So yourself, you yourself, have very good 2020 spiritual eyesight, and you can go out by the power and the grace of the Holy Spirit to help other people to see the light of God. You receive the light from God. And you help other people by the power of the Holy Spirit to see the light of God. I pray that this truth that we talk about in this teaching will become evident and real and practical in your life. Let us pray, Father. We thank you that you are working out your plan for our life in your best way. Thank you. 
that your favor is for our lifetime, not just a season, and that your favor supersedes our mistakes. We declare that our eyes are fixed on you, and we are looking for your goodness. And Lord, we pray that you shall clear our eyes, open our eyes to have a 2020 spiritual eyesight, and you anoint us, Lord, more and more to help other people, that the Holy Spirit on us, the anointing on us, shall help people to see the light of the gospel, Lord. Lord, thank you so much for reminding us the importance of clear spiritual eyesight and the importance of allowing you to help other people to see the light of Jesus Christ and the good news. Use us, Father, to be the light of the world. Thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. Please click like and subscribe to our channel. God bless you super abundantly. The Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 15, verse 6, When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. For I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. I believe that you are obedient Christians and you want to really obey the word of God. I pray that God will bless you. God will use you to be the blessing to the nations. And from now on, you will go higher and higher in the things of God. You will be the head, not the tail. You will be above, not beneath. I would like to invite you to listen to other teachings in this series and other series as well. God bless you. The Heavenly Father loves you so much. He wants to bless you, anoint you, and use you to be the blessing to the nations. May He put His hand upon you and give you so much grace, so much strength, joy, and wisdom. May the fire of God come and burn on the inside of you and use you to touch many lives in the world. May heaven be open over you and pour the goodness of God, the blessing of the Lord into your life. May God use you to carry the fire to other people. Set the captive free. Heal the sick. Preach the gospel and make disciples. Build His kingdom. May the grace of God work in your life and you become fruitful and you will have many rewards in heaven. May the Lord get the glory through your life.